Alright, so today I'm going to tackle a job that's probably going to be very messy. This is an aftermarket transmission pan. It's from RT Off-Road, which I think is just a Crown company or Crown bought them or something like that. But this kit is for the 999, which is the transmission I have, the Torque Flight. Uh, as far as I can tell, this job is the exact same for the 904 and the 32RH. Basically any three-speed you know, Torque Flight Jeep transmission. So this is going to be step two in trying to get this Jeep to run a little cooler. This transmission has puked its guts out uh, twice with me, so who knows how many times it's done it in the past. And it's definitely leaking around the transmission pan seal. I think it gets too hot. I, mean, I say that because it only does it when I get on the highway after I've been wheeling for however many hours. So it's like it gets heat soaked and then when it gets some real RPM at a real speed, and it pukes fluid everywhere. So step one was the hood vent. That'll help a lot with under hood temps, especially you know crawling around for hours and help the engine from getting heat soaked too much. And the pan is going to help. It's a little more surface area to cool off the fluid that's in it, and it holds an extra quart, so more capacity is better. Apparently, this will also help with uh, the transmission. Apparently, the transmission has a tendency to starve for fluid on really steep inclines. That's never happened to me, but. Uh, you know, whatever. Here's everything the kit comes with. New pan, spacer block for the pickup. It actually has a drain plug, which is nice. O-ring. I don't know what this washer goes to. It's not mentioned in the instructions, so it can't be that important. Uh, new bolts, new filter, and a new gasket. I guess it's rubber or neoprene or something. Alright, so I'm going to try to get this pan off without taking the skid plate off. It's pretty tight up in here, though. I'm going to go around and loosen all these bolts. They're all half inch. I'm going to loosen them all like three turns. And then see if I can get it to drain out of one side of the pan and catch it. Alright, I just got it all loosened up and we're already dripping out of the front, so that's good. So far everything's in the catch pan. <laughs> Here's what I was waiting for. Alright, I'm just going to let that pour out for the next five minutes or so. All right, not too much of a mess. Definitely recommend a big piece of cardboard. So it looks like all the cork gasket came with the old pan, which is good. The fluid looks a little milky. Oh yeah, it's definitely got some. Look at that. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at that. So this definitely needed to be changed regardless. Here's the magnet. Oh. Oh wow. There is a lot of metal on that magnet. Holy crap. So this transmission has 190,000 miles on it. Judging by this magnet and the trans fluid and the cork gasket, there's a good chance it's never been serviced or had the fluid changed or anything. We'll see if it survives a new uh, filter and fluid. That is a lot of nastiness. 
there's actual little shards of metal on this magnet. I wonder what the filter looks like. Alright, I went ahead and took the skid plate off. I, I don't know if I'd be able to get to those rear bolts on that deeper pan if that skid plate's in the way. And Now I have a lot more room to clean off the mounting surface and all that stuff, but look what's in the center of that filter. There's a bunch of metal junk stuck to it there. So, we'll get that off next. These are T25. I definitely was not expecting those to be Torx. This filter is hard as a rock. Now would be a good time to adjust your bands if you needed to. This transmission is working, so I'm not going to mess with it and do that sort of thing, but I mean, th this transmission is definitely hurting. Look at this right here. I mean, it's not good. So this filter is rock hard, and it's definitely just packed full, packed full of stuff. Look at those chunks. Look at those chunks right there. Alright, I'm ready to start putting the new parts on. Um, let me talk about my plan for this transmission. So this transmission is obviously hurting. Uh, my goal is to limp this Jeep along as it is. Both the engine and the transmission are in pretty bad shape. I'm going to limp it along until this winter, hopefully, and at that point I will pull the engine and probably the transmission at the same time. Still undecided on what I'm going to do with the engine, but I think while the transmission is out, either myself or a local shop or somebody, I'm going to go through it, do a basic rebuild on it, and I want to put a reverse manual valve body in it. That's going to be a couple hundred dollars for the for the valve body, but um, that's something that I've wanted to do for a while anyway, and that'll be the perfect opportunity. But hopefully, I can limp it along at least for another six months, and maybe this will buy me a little bit of time. And who knows? Maybe it'll work perfectly now that it has a filter that's not fully clogged. All right, so there's the correct orientation for the spacer and the filter. I've already got the transmission cleaned up. You know, the mating, the mating surface of so everything's cleaned up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. Put it together. There's a lot of hate for this transmission on the internet. I'm pretty sure 99% of those people have never actually owned this transmission. They're just repeating what they've read somebody else say that probably also have ne has never owned this transmission. But this tra people build these up a little bit and run king of the hammers on 40 inch tires. So, I mean, it's not a bad trans. Obviously it helps if you take care of it. So I definitely plan to stick with this transmission. And uh, you know with a reverse manual valve body and a floor shifter or you know like a you know whatever, something something on the floor, that's that's the end goal. All right, 35 inch pounds. All right, I'm definitely going to keep the factory magnet. So I think it was in, it was in that corner on the original pan. This is the front. I wiped all these bolts off too, even they were disgusting. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's a good tip. I read that somewhere, or somebody else's video might have had said that, that this rubber gasket or neoprene gasket, whatever it is, uh, you can hold it in place just by threading some of the bolts through it before you hold it up to the transmission. That keeps it flat, keeps it in place. Alright, let's get it installed. 
Hmm. All right, so like, like always, I had to uh, take off way more stuff than I thought I'd have to. Uh, this pan would not fit between the exhaust pipe and the filter, so I took off the trans mount. I've loosened the actual uh, trans mount mount, whatever you want to call it, the part that actually bolts to the transmission that holds the bushing or holds the, the rubber mount. And I've unbolted the exhaust at the header so that I've got a little wiggle room there. And I've unbolted the drive shaft. So maybe now it will fit. Nope. Sure ain't. Alright, I've got everything literally all the way loose. So, I mean, it has to fit now, right? Thank God. Okay, let's put some bolts in. Move on. I hope the exhaust and everything goes back together. If I keep the uh, 4.0, a TJ exhaust pipe is definitely on the list. Alright, I got it in there and I got everything torqued. 150 inch pounds all the way around and the drain bolt is 25 foot pounds. So now I'm going to reattach all this stuff and be done with this. All right, all done. I didn't film putting everything back together because I've already got other videos about, you know, putting all that stuff back together and I didn't feel like filming it again. Never figured out what this little nylon washer is for. Um, so I guess it's not that important. It's not mentioned in the instructions anywhere and it doesn't fit on the drain bolt or anything like that. So. I don't know, I'm not going to worry about it. Now would be the time to put transmission fluid back in the Jeep. I think it's going to take like five quarts or something like that to get the uh, dipstick to read uh, full again. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to wait and I think I'm going to go ahead and do a transmission cooler before I put fluid in it. That way, um, you know, I don't spill any extra ATF and have to fill it up a second time. I'll just fill it up one time. So um, I haven't bought a transmission cooler yet, so the Jeep might be sitting for a while, but but it's no big deal. I'm interested to see how it drives now uh, with the new fluid and a new filter in it. If it drives any different, the there was a lot of metal in that pan. Or there, was a lot, there was a lot of metal in that filter and on that magnet, so we'll see how it does with the new filter. Hopefully it's no different. Obviously this transmission is not in that great of a shape though, so I'll be addressing that fully, like I said, whenever I pull the engine. Probably this winter maybe, we'll see.